So there is a satanic financial anointing and then there is a divine financial anointing. And the satanic financial anointing is to bring you into a false mindset and operation when it comes to money, to make you cling to money, love money, uh, be governed by money, and never please God with money. But the divine anointing, the divine financial anointing is for you to have wisdom, for you to have honor, for you to have true worship, and for God to continually be able to use you for assignments in the kingdom of heaven. So we have um, a major opportunity in the new covenant to take on the abundance of God to the next degree. The abundance of God, greater than what Solomon saw, greater than what Abraham saw, greater than what Isaac saw, greater than what Jacob saw. And you have a powerful door into finances that they didn't have. They went through a lot to get to God's financial covenant for their life, but you have way more advantage today to walk in that. Poverty is a satanic anointing. Lack is a satanic anointing. Let me take you deep on here. That lack, the spirit of lack is a fallen angel that used to be an angel of abundance. The angel of lack, the satanic angel of lack today used to be an angel of abundance. The angel, the satanic angel of the thief, the satanic angel of uh, dishonor used to be a sowing angel. That's why God created it to be. Whenever you see our angel operating opposite in the kingdom of darkness. That means that that's where they was in heaven, in the opposite functionality. All poverty angels was wealth angels. All dishonor angels were sowing angels. All lack angels was abundance angels. So when, when you see the spirit of lack moving, that spirit used to be a supply system for God amongst the heavenly hosts. So this was its former position. Financial angels that are in heaven, of heaven, are now continuing God's legacy financially. The financial legacy that the heavenly hosts were supposed to bring before they fell, these financial angels today are bringing it for. So we have a whole intensity of financial activity going on right now, especially in America, because when everything gets high financially, when everything gets to this pinnacle, it's because God is looking for his people to take a hold of the financial activity that's going on. I have a son in the ministry right now that's experiencing a lot of miracles. And he's been sowing into me. I, I'm going to have him, uh, I'm going to have him uh, speak soon. But I want you to comprehend how when the financial angels are with your life, you'll have money coming to you from various ideas, connections. You'll have money coming to you from various decisions that you make and profit will keep on happening to you. The financial anointing of the Holy Ghost is for you to demonstrate God's love correctly, demonstrate his power correctly. So people could be able to view and see the greatness of his wisdom and the greatness of his love. When the financial anointing is on your life, you'll encounter uh, the Holy Spirit giving you a work ethic, a boldness, 
and uh, submission to authority. And also you'll be able to govern yourself differently than the generation before you. The presence of God takes a sower into a dimension of finances that is greater than anybody in the Old Testament, anybody in the New Testament. They never seen that level of money. And what I found out is that the money anointing is actually a judgment anointing because the spirit of God is taking your heart and seeing what priorities you have chosen to invest in, sow yourself into, and how well you handle that money without becoming fearful, angry, jealous, covetous, or comparing yourself to other people's life. He uses money to judge your heart. Every time money gets into your hands, you have selfishness or selflessness. You have honor or dishonor. You have blessing or cursing. You have wisdom or foolishness. You have harvest or hindrance. Harvest or hindrance. In that one moment, you could go to harvest and multiply the seed, or you could go to hindrance and never see the plan of God manifest. You cannot enter into your destiny with God without learning how to sow into God. God uses the supply of seed so that you can now visibly show your trust levels, your love levels, your submission levels. And you have to, uh, there's submission with the seed because remember, submission is submission come underneath a mission. And so submission means that I'm coming underneath the mission of God's word being preached in the earth, the mission of the gospel going forth. So submission is coming underneath the mission of God reaching souls. Submission is coming underneath the mission of God giving you um a divine assignment to support his kingdom work in the earth realm. So submission comes with the seed and it's exemplified through the seed because every time you are carrying money in your possession, the submission is that you could use your mission with that money, but yet you come underneath God's mission. Now there's a reward already set up called harvest when you come underneath God's mission with money, now he's going to minister more money to you through opportunities, through relationships, through health, in your body, giving you energy to be able to accomplish money assignments, even you being able to go to work is a harvest of health and energy in your body. Because if your arm don't work, you can't lift no items. If God withdrew the, the life from your legs, you couldn't walk down the aisle of your workplace. If God took away the, the ability to speak, you wouldn't be able to communicate to your boss. I'll do this job or communicate. Uh, I did it. You wouldn't be able to talk. If God took away your hearing, you wouldn't be able to hear nobody giving you an instruction. If God took away your sight, you wouldn't be able to see nobody or see the problem, how to solve it. So even physical elements are harvests from God. And you take the harvest of your physical body and you use it again as a seed. You take those physical elements and you place it back as a seed. A satanic financial anointing will blind you from the abundance package that Jesus has for you. They say, I come to give you life and life more abundantly. This is the gospel of Jesus. That the thief cometh but to steal, but I have come that I might give you life and life more abundantly. What King Jesus is saying, I come so that you could have everything that you desire without any limitation on it. 
so that you can have it to your own enjoyment, your own satisfaction. The satanic financial anointing is to deceive you out of the covenant of wealth and riches that God has promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18. Remember the Lord thy God, for it is he, I think it's Deuteronomy 8, 18. He has given you the power to get wealth, that he might establish the covenant in which he promised to your fathers. He swore to your fathers. So, so, so. The great God Jehovah swore to them that the life that Abraham had, God told Abram, they're going to live it too. Well, Abraham lived rich. Abraham lived wealthy. And Abraham was a massive sower. Let's go to Genesis chapter 12. Abraham was a massive sower and Abraham operated in a sowing anointing. That's why God placed the reaping anointing on him. You got to master the sowing anointing to wear a reaping anointing. The reaping anointing is where God qualifies you and gives you authority and charge to receive money, to receive favor, to receive deliverance, to receive uh, provision, to receive, bl receive blessing. The reaping anointing comes as a reward of the sowing anointing being uh, flown out of you. So you got to learn how to sow. Learning how to sow is being able to take anything that God gives in your presence and to also acknowledge God with it and be willing to sacrifice. Pit yourself, sacrifice means to pit self last, pit King Jesus first. And when you have that mentality, now the creativity of sowing can flow through you. And that's where Apostle Paul was talking about God loveth the cheerful giver. What he was saying, God loveth someone whose heart is so involved and immersed in giving that they're able to let me show them how to give the attitude, the amount. Because saints, Ananias and Sapphira, I think that's Genesis chapter five. No, no, uh, Acts chapter five. I believe that is where it talks about Ananias and Sapphira. Ananias showed you that even if you do so, you could sow the incorrect amount. Because it's not that Ananias didn't sow. It was that Ananias didn't sow the amount that God wanted him to sow. So when we look at the scriptures, it wasn't that Ananias didn't give the seed. He gave the seed, but it wasn't the amount that God wanted to give. So there is an accuracy to sowing. You don't ever want to find yourself stepping into sowing, but resisting the level or the, the grade level, the, uh, the dimension that God wants you to sow out of. Let me give you an example. Say I make $4,000 every two months. I don't want to be a $50 sower or a $20 sower. I want to see if somehow I can reach giving God a thousand. You see what I'm saying? Because when I, when I discover the portal to give to God cheerfully and bountifully, what happens next is the Lord is studying my heart with that money. And so what the Lord does is say, okay, this how you rocking? Well, this how I'm a rock towards you. And the Lord finds a way to give you plenty. He finds a way to take that level of sowing that you operate in and multiply that level of sowing, uh, that level of sowing so that you'll have more money to sow and also have some money to spend. God created the sowing anointed, but he also created the spending anointed. And God does not just take, take, take from you. He told Solomon, what shall I give you? Sowing activates God as your supplier. And God doesn't like supplying small. That's why he gives you seed faith to go to new heights in your sowing. So if you start off sowing at 50, you'll get your, your dream about 100. That's what the sowing anointing does. If you start off sowing at 100, you'll dream about 500. If you get to 500, you'll dream about going to 800. 
You get to 800, you'll dream about 1,000. 1,000, you'll, you'll dream about 1,500. 1,500, you'll dream about 1,800. 2,000, 3,000. And see, the sowing anointing won't ever let you park yourself at a certain sowing grace. It'll take you higher. Because remember, the father is the richest individual that exists. The father is not a billionaire or a trillionaire. There's nobody that we could name today that's at the father's level in finances. As a matter of fact, there are people camouflaging in the earth realm right now as if they're the richest. No, the Holy Ghost is the richest man on earth. You're not hearing me, people of God. And imagine if the Holy Ghost comes upon you, the Holy Ghost dwells in you. The Holy Ghost is eager for you to tap into his financial wisdom, his money wisdom, his money anointing. Money cometh to the child of God that's led by the Holy Ghost. Money cometh is the Holy Ghost anthem for a child of God to speak it and loose their spirit. Money cometh is something that God wants every child of God to say with their mouth to train your soul in the financial anointing. You got to train your soul into the financial anointing. Your soul will cling to poverty and not even know it. You say, prophet, how come, why would my soul cling to poverty? Because look, every time you want to argue with authority, every time you feel lazy, every time you feel discouraged, every time you feel weary, every time you get upset with people that you're not supposed to be upset with, every time you get sad about sickness, sad about life, sad about the future, every time you watch the news too long, you are damaging the financial anointing that either could come to your soul or is already in your soul and you're damaging it. You got to be the John the Baptist for your wealth to come. When you honoring God and the Holy Ghost could talk to you about sowing into his work, into his word being preached, into a man of God that's sent to you. When the Holy Ghost could talk to you about that, now you are on the runway to fly into abundance. You're on the runway to take off into wealth. The spirit of God is not okay with you living a life downtrodden financially. The spirit of God is not okay with it. The spirit of God not excited about your, your deficits. The spirit of God got a mentality right now to train you how to sow and how to reap. The spirit of God don't just want you to be a sower. The spirit of God wants you to be a reaper. But if you stop sowing, you can't step into reaping because remember even when you start reaping the sowing is going to protect what you what you reaped so the sowing anointed got to stay strong and if god could establish the sowing anointed on the inside of your soul without you going to the left or to the right you'll never ever have another day of poverty lack or financial issues ever again king jesus came in a body was God in the flesh to destroy all financial issues. The blood of Jesus, the cross of Christ, shattered Satan's dream to keep on stealing from you. Did you just hear what I just said? The blood of Jesus, the cross of Christ, shattered Satan's dream to keep on stealing from you. See, saints, that's why King Jesus said in the Gospels that blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Because when you pour in spirit, that means that your attitude is lacking satanic traits. Your attitude is lacking pride, arrogance, uh, impatience, anxiety. That means that Satan not able to infiltrate your soulish man, not able to invade your characteristics. So when, 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 
when, when we see the Lord dying on the cross and shedding his blood, he stripped all lack devils, all poverty demons from be, being able to control what happens to you in this life. Now demon spirits cannot control your provision. The spirit of devils cannot manipulate your money. Satanic power was broken by the blood of Jesus in your finances. Now the financial anointing of the Holy Ghost could flow and bring you out of a roach infested apartment. Bring you out of being hooked on governmental assistance. Bring you out of being stuck at a level of financially. Now, the blood of Jesus, the cross of Christ, has removed all levels of hindrances, delays, and the postponing of your prosperity. The blood of Jesus broke the satanic financial anointing off of you. Now, now listen to me. This is why the Holy Spirit trains you to not be lustful because lust is a financial anointing blocker. Lust is a money cometh blocker. Remember, lust always makes you proud because pride magnifies you over God. And isn't that what it did to Lucifer? You notice that, right? Lucifer didn't even care about the father creating Lucifer or giving Lucifer those abilities. All Lucifer saw was, um, I'm just going to cater to my pride. The blood of Jesus destroyed all poverty demons that would try to plant themselves in your soul throughout the course of your life. So now the blood of Jesus has given you the victory over all financial devils so that you could sow and reap and live big for the glory of God and be able to be used by God with brand new instructions. Remember Joseph of Arimathea, right? Joseph was able to buy that tomb for Jesus so Jesus could be sanctified. If there was no money, how Jesus was going to get to that sanctified tomb. Jesus would have been buried where the cold congregation was. But now Jesus could have played out his story correctly by being in a tomb that's sanctified and all because of money. Nobody prayed to get Jesus into that tomb. Jesus got into that tomb because of money cometh. Oh my God. Money cometh got Jesus into the tomb where he was supposed to be buried. Since you ever heard that before? Money cometh got Jesus into the location where prophecy could be fulfilled. Money cometh. The absence of wealth hinders God's perfect plan. If the wealth doesn't get from Jer Joseph of Arimathea to Jesus, his dead body, Jesus is not buried in the correct place. How much things are not being properly positioned in your life until you honor God and receive his wealth anointing, the financial anointing, the money power of the, the Holy Ghost. Because if Joseph of Arimathea didn't receive that uh, uh, money power of the Holy Ghost, he would not have been able to have been called on by God. There are some Joseph of Arimatheas on this line right now. Where the money cometh mantle going to live on you and you're going to be able to be called by God to handle things for him on earth. He not going to be able to call that girl praying that you know always praying because she ain't got no money, baby. 
He not going to be able to call that man that always talking Bible scriptures because he ain't got no money. He going to be able to call you because you are a kingdom vessel. You are sowing and reaping. God can't call on everybody. Because if they don't got the money, they don't got the ability to carry it out. Remember, life on earth is not a test for God. So God shouldn't have to do no miracles talking about, oh, well, if it's not there, God could just make it. God could just make money short right here. No, no, no. Then that wave out your test. Now that wave out your part to play. God created a system not of, I'm going to send money out the sky. God created a system called seed, time, and harvest. And it's for you to be tested. Yeah, God could send money from the sky, but you ain't going to be tested because you haven't sown nothing. God is the one sowing. God's love for you is not underneath a test. Your love for God is underneath a test. God honoring you is not underneath a test. You honoring God is underneath a test. Remember, heaven is not a place where God has to prove himself or, 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 or he's trying to convince you to live there. Heaven is a place where you persuade God that you are complying with his salvation plan. And as a result, because you believe him and what he has said is right, now he lets you live with him for all eternity. So God will never remove the pathway because the pathway is where you choose who you're going to bow your knee to in this present time. After this present time, everybody going to bow their knee to Jesus, but it's too late. Every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess, Jesus is Lord, but it's going to be too late. God tests every man while you're in your body. If Joseph or Arimathea didn't follow the tests and pass the tests, God wasn't going to call on him. Think about that. He was able to sow that money because Joseph of Arimathea was a sower. He was working the kingdom system. God made him rich. God made him wealthy. God blessed him and blessed him in the city, blessed him in the field, blessed him coming in, blessed him coming out. And he was able to be a, a, a vessel of honor for God's plan. I want you to say this to yourself. I want you to say this into your atmosphere. The Holy Ghost is going to be able to use me in finances. The Holy Ghost is going to use me to represent him properly in financial manifestation. I am a representative of the kingdom of heaven. I am the appearance of abundance. Abundance cometh to me. Wealth cometh to me. I live in a financial anointing. That embarrasses devils. I have a yoke destroying financial anointing on my life. Saints, every time you honor God and you sow money into his work, you destroy every yoke of the devil. Yokes that Satan create with the mind. There'll be times where you need to name your seed uh, um, and target it towards your mentality. Because saints, one, one sad thing that I have noticed is that people don't keep their fear of God. They let it go. People walk with God for a time and then they choose to go and do what they want to do. When you sow in, sometimes you need to name your seed. I destroy every mental attack from Satan. I, I name this seed helmet of salvation seed. Lord, I know you're going to bring me into wealth. I know you're going to bring me into riches, but I'm naming this seed. Keep me on the inside. Don't let me be deceived. Don't let me be de deceitful. Don't let me drift away from God, but keep my mind in the Holy Ghost. Sometimes you're going to have to name your seed for mental health because many people, they, they do so much spiritual activity in the flesh. Y'all not hearing me in here. They talk in tongues in the flesh. They pray for hours in the flesh. 
They fast in the flesh and then they get weary with God. Then they get mad. Then they get upset. Then they go right back to sin. Stupid. When really they took spiritual things and did it in a fleshly manner. Remember the man went up on the mountain with the tax collector and said, I fast, I tithe. And Jesus said that he didn't go down justified. The tax collector went down justified because the tax collector chose to be in the spirit and said, be merciful to me. The tax collector recognized, I can't do nothing without you, Lord. Help me, Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, help me. Holy Ghost, I know that I got a lot of knowledge, but Holy Ghost, I want you to keep my heart sincere. Don't let me play around with your glory. Holy Ghost, don't let me be disrespectful to your presence. Holy Ghost, don't let me ignore you. Holy Ghost, don't let me become unthankful. Holy Ghost, don't let me stop praying. Holy Ghost, don't let me stop submitting myself. Help me to be a learner. Help me to be a student. Help me to be thankful. Help me to be consistent. And the Holy Ghost was engaged by that tax collector. And Jesus said that man that went and fast every week and tithe every week, he didn't go down justified. So the power of that text is this. That man that was doing that, he thought that he was going to do the spiritual activity without becoming spirit. And many of you all do that. That's why I don't change you. There's some of you all on here. You do spiritual stuff, but you got evil spirits. And those evil spirits manifest when you get around people, when you get around places, when you get around things, because you're not really delivered. You are a religious individual. You're not letting the power of God change you. Apostle Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. So the power of God comes, but it has a, it, its final de destination is not just come to where you are, but to bring you to salvation, power of God unto salvation. And some of you are not walking in salvation because you all you have learned to do is spiritual activity. You're not spirit. You're not letting the spiritual activity change you. So after you, krabba, 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 you, you're not, what is that? What is that? After you up there telling us, oh, he said in the word, he do it. And then your mind, because you a faker, stop faking this. This not no fake encounter. This real. The Holy Ghost is real. He's a man. He's God almighty. Coming down in a spirit form to converse with you. The Holy Ghost don't come into your life to have you playing around, talking about, oh, I'm still trying to overcome this. The Holy Ghost come upon you for you to receive power to be his witness. That means that now you are testifying of the freedom that he brought you, the blessing that he brought you, the wealth that he brought you, the health that he brought you, the wisdom that he brought you, the understanding that he brought you, the truth that he brought you, the liberty that he brought you, the diligence that he brought you. The Holy Ghost does not come into your life for you to remain broke. Broke mentally and, and mental broke means that you're broken. You can't handle life. That's why people be using drugs because they can't handle life. You ever wonder how people call themselves millionaires and they always drunk? They always high. How come you can't enjoy your millionaire status? Because they, they, they broke. Nobody got a million dollars talking about I'm rich and then they always drunk. They always high because they're not really rich. They poor. They broke. Broke people are hooked on habits. And they broke and that's why their mentality has to cling to stuff to try to make it feel like it's rich. But it's not. If you got joy and peace, you don't need no substance. There's several of you all on here that's popping pills. You're watching me as I'm talking to you. In the name of Jesus, be free from that pill popping. I'm looking at you right now, and the pills that you're taking is Satan's link to keep you with a form of godliness and deny the power. 
that pill popping, that addiction, that secretive. The Holy Spirit set you free right now. That's just a word of knowledge. The Holy Spirit setting you free from the addiction to pill popping. God got better for you. You don't need no depression meds. You don't need no anxiety medication. Stop going to that doctor, letting them tell you that they're going to prescribe you that pill for your anxiety. Get off of that pill. You are a child of God. The power of God is with you. And you got to work your way out of demonic bondage. You got to work out your salvation and the pill ain't doing it for you. Get off the pill. You already know that you're not supposed to be on the pill, but you'd rather be lazy and listen to a natural man than to go after God and get your freedom. The Holy Ghost, no, the Holy Ghost ain't having you take those pills. Stop trying to trick yourself. Don't be up here telling so. oh, well, I thought the Lord told me to do it for a couple more. He ain't tell you nothing. Them devils got you on them pills. And once them devils got you on them pills, it don't stop from there. You get hooked and you get hooked to other stuff. Ain't no pill could set you free from anxiety. No pill could set you free from no mental uh, demons. That pill popping, you need to get word popping. And that's where your freedom going to lie. Remember, Legion was a demoniac, crazy, full of spirits, mental demons. Jesus set them free. Not by no pill popping, not by no going to no, no, take no anxiety pill, all this stuff. You got to understand, Legion was depressed. Legion was anxious. Legion, Legion was demonic. When you take those depression and anxiety pills, they open you up to the spirit realm and they allow demons to come. Now, saints, let me just say this. I have a book that I'm about to release in the next couple of days called uh, is dealing with destroying anxiety and trauma. I'm about to release this book. And inside of this book, I'm going to be dealing with the anointing concerning these things. And I'm going to show you how to practically get off of pills, how to get out of trauma, get healed from your trauma. And I'm going to show you how to get free from this fallen angel called anxiety. God don't got his children on no drugs, taking drugs like that. Yes, there's a time where God could permit a path where you're on medications. But when you up there popping pills and you addicted to the pills and, and, and you clinging to the pills and, and now you're emotionally invested into these pills. You, now you, you have just allowed a demon to take lordship over you. And don't feel bad. Just feel this deliverance. God's will is not for you to be popping no pills. And I'm, I'm going to tell you something. It, those of you all that's popping pills, you, you, I'm not talking about those of you all like God got you like a thorn in your flesh and he like got you walking a path where like you take medicines like that and is a part of something and he weaning you off. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about those of you all that's hooked on popping pills. You know that God don't want you to do it because you don't be having peace about it at times. And you know, uh, I don't want nobody to know I do this. That opens up the gates of hell for a fallen angel to have access to you to keep you in prison. You don't want that. Let yourself be liberated from that devil. Let there be freedom in your soul now in Jesus name. I break all yokes of pill popping on this line right now in the name of Jesus. Drug abuse, substance abuse. I command you out. I command you out of everybody. Come out of their belly right now. Come out of their belly right now. 
come out of their belly right now. Come out of their bones. Come out of their ligaments. Come out of their organs right now in Jesus' mighty name. All of that substance abuse, that mental abuse, that physical torment that you go through, let there be light in your soul. And saints, this is major because remember, when your soul is not in a good place, you can't enter into wealth because look, mentally, there's a door open to the devil. So what's going to happen to all that money that God gives you? What happens when God trusts you with money in his kingdom? What's going to happen to the money? The money going to get used with that influence that you're underneath demonically. That money going right back into the satanic kingdom. Every drunk card on this line in the name of Jesus, come out. You liquor spirits, you bear spirits, Red Bull spirits, all of them false energy drink spirits that you think use it for your body, damaging your body. Come out. Because saints, at the end of the day, you supposed to be being fueled by the power of the Holy Ghost. You don't need no energy drink, no sports drink. All these different type of stuff messing up the chemicals in the body, making people crazy, moody, weird. But you don't know is what you allowing into your system. There's a covenant with Satan in those things. Saints, don't think for one minute that Satan don't try to slip in through different things to get you hooked. Saints, let me give you a secret about me. If I get there's times in my life where I like a certain food or I like a certain thing. If I, if I, if I get hooked on it, I'll stop. I'll stop it because I don't want to be underneath slavery to nothing. You see what I'm saying? So saints, there's times in my life where it's like, I might like a certain food or like a certain snack. Like for instance, weeks ago, like months ago, like I had tasted some cookies and they was real good. And then I found like, okay, after I ate them like an hour, I wanted to eat them like Five minutes, three minutes, two minutes. And I felt myself being pulled in that direction. So you know what I did? I went to go get the cookies and throw them in the garbage. You hear me? I went go get the cookies and threw them in the garbage. Because I don't like that it started talking to me. You're not hearing me. See, I, I, I need you to learn the spirit realm better. The minute that it tried to rule me and tell me what to do, I said, no, you, you, you're, not, you're, not, you're not over me. So I'm throwing you away. And some of y'all are like, well, prophet, that's just cookies. No, no, no. Once you subject yourself mentally to follow the pattern of anything, Satan now could use anything and get you to follow that pattern as well. And you have to subject yourself. Real dominion is where you could take authority and it don't take authority over you. By the way, when you master that, God will let you have the cookies. But see, you got to humble yourself and recognize even more so that I can't let myself be driven by anything other than the Holy Ghost. See, saints, even when God brings you into money cometh in wealth and money is moving in your direction, don't let anything have dominion over you. Don't let anything have dominion over you because then money going to have dominion over you as well. And when God tell you to sow $100,000, you're going to be fighting God. God say, sow 25000 sow 13000 sow 10000 and you fighting with God. Because, see, that soul is already sensual and fleshly and demonic. So now God trying to dominate it and tell it how to honor. And it's saying, no, I'm going to dishonor you. I'm going to follow my own way. I'm going to follow my own feelings. That can't happen. See, God breaks your soul before he makes you financially whole. He breaks your soul because you can't ever leave dependency on the Holy Ghost with money. Every time you sow a seed, that seed is supposed to stretch you. 
The seed supposed to be so massive when it leaves you that you have to wrap yourself around what you just did and believe God for a harvest. That's what sowing does. Because you invested all of yourself into that seed. Now, only the Lord could bring the success of your life into full fruition. Only the Lord could bring it into full finalization by his mighty power. Saints, when I started sowing as a teenager, I let my seed be so painful that only God himself could have brought me out my situation. And I'll never forget when God, through Dr. Mike Murdoch, called me on the phone, offered to help me. Uh, a televangelist that done raised billions of dollars, never met him before, never sat at the table with him, never preached with him. And the father linked me with him years ago and jump-started me back into the blessing of Abraham. But I was sowing. And I didn't just sow one seed. I was sowing for a period of time. When you keep on sowing, you put force on the plan of God. You say, well, prophet, God is all powerful. Why he need force on his plan? Because we battle not against flesh and blood. You ain't read your Bible, but against principalities and powers and the rulers of the darkness of this present age. And the spiritual host of wickedness in the heavenly places. We fight the good fight of faith. Because there are other agents attempting to block off God's will. And if you're not vigilant, if you're not focused, and if you're not aggressive in obeying God's kingdom, you will be another statistic of not receiving God's plan for your life on earth. You never have it. You never receive it. You never walk in it. And God has it for you. God wants it for you and you never walk in it. It's very possible. Saints, it don't matter how much the Lord loves you. You can live a life of sickness and poverty here on earth. And Jesus, the son of God, is walking on streets of gold. And he wants you to live in abundance, live in riches, live in increase, live in money cometh, live in financial peace and wholeness and wellness. Live in sowing and reaping and you never get there. Sowers are activators. Many people are waiting for God to do something that they didn't even activate. What Jesus did at the cross. Who is Jesus? Jesus was the son of God. Jesus was the seed of God. So even when you say Jesus is the one, remember Jesus is a seed. So the father got everything that you say going to come to you. And you saying by Jesus, by believing in Jesus, Jesus is a seed. So for you to say, I believe in Jesus for the will of God to happen in my life. You're saying, I believe in the seed. Jesus is the seed of God. So when you say, I believe in Jesus, when you say Jesus is Lord, you're saying the seed is Lord. You're saying the seed is is the ruler over all things because Jesus was a seed that was sown in the ground. So if you say you believe in Jesus, you're saying you believe in the seed. So when Jesus is training you how to activate his kingdom, he goes right back to what? Seed. And imagine you saying, I reject the seed, but I believe in Jesus. How could you believe in Jesus and Jesus is a seed that was sown? So now Jesus is training you how to activate the kingdom with a seed that is sown. Let's um, go to the altar that Abraham created. I said Genesis chapter 12. Let's go there. Let's go to verse one. It says, now the Lord said unto Abraham, get thee out thy country, thy kindred from thy father's house unto a land that I will show you. Now the land is a harvest. Remember what I'm telling you. Now, this is the same hundredfold that Jesus talked about in Mark chapter 10, verse 30, where he said, you leave family, leave houses and lands 
This the same hundredfold. So we see him talking to Abraham in Genesis chapter 12. You can read it for yourself. Uh, uh, but let me give you revelation more than Bible study. And look, verse two, he said, I'll make of thee a great nation. And I will bless thee and make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee and curse them that curse thee. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. You notice it didn't say the families of heaven. It said the families of the earth. That means that people that will live out their life on earth, they will have the same occurrences that you have happening to them. So now let's look at Abraham to see what he's doing. Let's look at what he's doing. In the verse six, it says, and Abraham passed through the land unto uh, the place of Sikkim unto the plain of Morah and the Canaanite was then in the land. Let's go to verse seven, Genesis 12, seven. It says, and the Lord appeared unto Abram and said unto thy seed, would I give this land? And there, watch this here. The Lord appeared unto Abraham and said unto him, Abram and said unto thy seed, will I give this land? Who is the seed of Abraham? Abram, you. So God spoke to him and prophesied about the future. He said, unto your seed, I'm gonna give this land. So God gave him a promise. Now let's look at the result and the reaction that he has when God promises him something, when God prophesies something to him and gives him the word of the Lord, gives him the word of God and teaches him of something that he needs in his soul. Look at his response. Verse seven says, and there Abram built an altar unto the Lord who appeared unto him. So Abraham went right into sowing seed. God tells Abraham a promise and he goes right into sowing seed. So saints, this shows you there is a, a Abrahamic sowing anointing that has all of your future in it. There's an Abrahamic sowing glory, sowing wisdom that unlocks everything that you want to enjoy. Every promise of God is wrapped, saturated in Abraham's sowing reaction to the word of God. He decided to sow into the word that was preached to him. Watch verse seven, Genesis 12, seven. And the Lord appeared unto Abraham and said, unto thy seed will I give this land. And there builded he an altar unto the Lord. Watch, he builds an altar who appeared unto him. He starts sowing seed. So as soon as God gives him the word, he reacts to the word with sowing what he has in his possession. So he takes his natural possession and offers it up to God. Wow. So for you to live the life of Abraham in harvests, you also have to master the life of Abraham in seeds. Abrahamic sowing understanding, sowing knowledge, sowing wisdom. So Abraham has a mantle to sow, which means that he sows without any fighting with God, arguing with God, or without any fear. Because fearful sowing includes the thief's suggestions. Fearful sowing includes the thief's opinion. And the thief could get in the way of that seed where you don't sow correctly. You don't yield yourself to even sow at all sometimes. Think about that. That's when people make promises and say, I'm going to sow when I get this. And then when they get it, they don't even sow because the thief done entered in. Remember, the thief has one ministry. Stop the seed from coming from you. 
The thief is an expert of blocking sewing assignments. The thief is there to block the idea to honor God, the boldness to honor God creatively in a spectacular way. The thief does not want you, if the thief can't stop you from sowing the money, the thief will stop you from sowing the money to the right person. Many people, they get inspired by sowing and then they sow the money somewhere else. The person that trains you how to sow is the person that's worthy to collect the seed. Remember, they, 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 you was their protege. They taught you how to sow. So imagine somebody teaches you how to race and they got their own track. And you say, I'm not going to your track. I'm going over to the other track to go race. But they trained you how to race and they need somebody on their track. So now you running on someone else's track when all those abilities that you have was trained by another trainer. They didn't train you. So why would you take the training of run track running and run on their track and leave the one that trained you how to run without a track runner? The way that you respond is to the one that trained you how to run on the track. Many people... If they are not going to ever stop sowing, they are seed eaters of the right soil. So they won't sow into the person that's worthy of the seed. They'll go and take the money and sow it into a preacher that didn't even train them or give them the wisdom to sow. Imagine you take the seed after it was trained by you by another preacher of the gospel and you take the seed and sow it into somebody that never taught you or didn't even have the anointing to break the yoke off of you for you to sow. So there's a seed witchcraft that goes on where people don't reward who trains them. God will have somebody train you how to sow so that you could help them out with your seed. That's why they trained you. Saints, go look at every basketball player right now. Go look at them when they go to training camp. Do you think that their coach is training them to go play for them? Okay, let me give you an example. Um, if a point guard is playing for the Lakers... Do you think that the coach of the Lakers is training that point guard all in training camp for the for the point guard to go over and say, I'm playing for the Timberwolves now or, I'm, or, or whoever, Chicago, uh, I, uh, whatever they call these teams and say, I'm playing for Chicago or uh, uh, Chicago right now. Imagine how would that look if you saw that? You'd be like, nah, the coach trained you so that you play for the L.A. Lakers. But they over there now playing for Minnesota or they playing for Chicago. No, the coach trained them so that they could play for them. But they went over to the other side and went go train for, uh, now they up there working everything that the coach trained them for the Chicago team. And they was trained in Los Angeles by the coach. And the coach invested all things, dribbling, uh, shooting, timing, rebounding, everything. And then they go over there. This is what goes on a lot in sowing. When the man of God inspires you, there's also a grace to inspire the man of God by sowing into him. Men of God get inspired by money. You probably will never hear anybody say that. Because I found out that a lot of people like being fake. But I don't like fake. Fake is a snake. And if somebody could be fake with you, they could be fake with, they're dangerous. Anybody that could be fake with you is very dangerous. 
I'm not a fake person. Men of God like money. Even the man of God that comes and criticize other men of God. That man of God likes money. I've heard many men of God, and yes, they are men of God, even though they're stupid, they're still men of God. There's some stupid men of God. I've heard stupid men of God criticize money, but yet they are millionaires, multi. But nobody will go and say, let me ask him to give all his money to me then, since he hates money so much, since it's not about money. That's fake. That's fake. Men of God like money. Money inspires a man of God. And when he is inspired, the anointing that he has can flow at a great velocity more than ever before because he's inspired. When a man of God's heart and soul is happy, he imparts more. So the depth of the rivers of God that's in him can come out. That's the truth. Now, it's so funny to me. I've seen over the history of ministry, I've seen people, they slander other people for talking about money, but then they'll still tell you, support our vision. Here's our PayPal. Here's our cash app. Wait, huh? Huh? What? Huh? So, so you're, you're, you're still trying to get money. Saints, let me give you a secret. If somebody does videos on a man of God, why do they do it publicly to make money? You ever seen somebody say, oh, what, what the Lord has told me about this, is what the Lord told me about Jay-Z. Do you think that they just telling you what the Lord told them about Jay-Z? No, they go to a public media site to get your attention so that you stay on the video because they pay you according to how people stay on the video. By the way, I don't do that. I've never done that where I got social media money from from uh, 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 like the sites, like Facebook, YouTube. I've never done that. Now, saints, is there something wrong with it? No. And yes, <laughs> it's a twofold question. It's a twofold answer because for, for people that God will have them do that, it's okay. But for people that God not having them do that, it's not okay. And that goes for everything. Like it's like if somebody say, is sex okay? Well, there's no way for me to answer that question. Sex is okay, but you might be saying sex with a man and a woman that God haven't put together. Well, then it's not, not okay. You see what I'm saying? So a lot of times questions could be disguised in a way. And if you say yes, somebody could take that yes and say, well, okay, two men, two women. No, the parts don't even fit. Men of God like money. Every man of God likes money. Every man of God. You're not going to meet one man of God that don't like money. And see, you got you to gotta be honest if you're going to be a worker, minister of God financially. You can't be fake. Men of God, they feel a special anointing when they are honored by people that they're preaching to. Because when you sow into the man of God, he feels respected. He already gets disrespected by so many people. He already gets disrespected by people that don't like him. He already gets slandered. He already gets spit at. He already gets persecuted. People laugh at him, mock him, they disrespect him. They talk down on him. 
So when he sees someone responding to who he is, he feels good. Money unlocks your mentor's deepest levels for him to take you there. Money unlocks your mentor's deepest levels for him to take you there. So when you're sowing, you take your man of God's spirit and you recognize it and you celebrate it and you say, God, I see you talking to me. I see you ministering to me. I see you teaching me. I see you giving me your word. So I'm going, I'm going to honor you and when I'm honoring this body in which you're speaking to me out of, I'm honoring you. And when you do that, it opens the heavens. Taking care of your man of God is a gift. And it's a face-to-face -face encounter with the Lord. Because the Lord is inside of that body looking at you, hearing from you, and experiencing you as you honor him in that other body, in that body that he's using on earth. Since God lives in a man of God's body, talking to you, teaching you, imparting to you, and when you could recognize him with honor, it does something to the level of impartation. Sowing allows who God sent to you to promote you into deeper access. This is very true. Dr. Mike Murdoch told me, well, there's some things I don't really want to say out of confidentiality. I don't want to. But he praised me because of my reaction of honor to him whenever I see him. It don't matter, saints, it don't matter if we are just out eating somewhere. I'm going to find a way to sow big into him. I'm going to prepare my seed. Because even though he not asking nothing from me and he won't spend time with me, because I value him and I respect him, I honor him. And this is the Abrahamic spirit of blessing. Many people not going to be millionaires that call on the name of Jesus. You know why? Because they're not going to sow. That's all it is to it. You can't say, oh, well, well maybe that's not God's plan for me. Huh. You didn't read the Bible? You didn't see that I come to give you life and life more abundantly. If you leave father's house, lands, I'll give you a hundredfold in this life and in the life to come. Hundredfold in this life of houses and lands. You didn't read that in your Bible, baby. So, so that's not up for debate. God got a big life for you. Whether or not you get there is not on God. It's on use. Because every time you sow, you give God a photograph of your dependency and your divine trust in him. And God loves to feel trusted. He loves when you put your money where your mouth is. He loves when you take what you could use in this life for yourself and you say, Lord, I wanna show you my love for you. If a woman is being dated by a man, if that man go buy a nice purse, some nice shoes. She going to feel good. And saints, there's actually some woman that if you buy them something, they actually want to sleep with you or vice versa. But why do people say, okay, I'm going to return the favor. Why do they think like that? Because that's what pleasure does. Pleasure is so powerful that it makes the person Start thinking thoughts of love towards you. I'm saying this so that you can recognize God. When you give God pleasure, 
in trusting him and honoring him, he is now a prisoner of love thoughts to expedite anything that's going to pleasure you. Are you hearing me? God wants to expedite anything that will pleasure you, especially when you're a sower. Saints, seed faith is very real. I feel so blessed because God revealed seed faith to Oral Roberts and Oral Roberts revealed seed faith to Dr. Mike Murdoch. And then Dr. Mike Murdoch went farther in the seed faith revelation. And I have also lived to hear Dr. Mike Murdoch even tell me that I say things about the seed that he never heard before, which is an honor to me because I know his accomplishments and greatness. And each generation is supposed to tap into further grace. Seed faith is really a Holy Ghost display of reaping the life of heaven on earth because of your unselfishness in giving. Seed faith is where you take what you possess and you sow it. And as a result, God multiplies it and brings it back to you according to your wish. What did you name the seed? What did you name the seed? I named my daughter Zendaya Glory Holmes. That's what I named her. I gave her her name. And that's what she does. Her name means to give thanks. She's always saying, thank you, daddy. Thank you, daddy. Thank you so much, daddy. Thank you, daddy. She's always thanking me. I named her off of a Thanksgiving anointing. And her performance is Thanksgiving. When you name your seed, that's what's going to perform for you. So if you name your seed for health, health performs in your life. If you name your seed wealth, wealth performs in your life. If you name your seed wisdom, wisdom performs in your life. When you name your seed, that's what performs. When you name your seed, that's what performs. The seed that you sow must create discomfort. It must abort selfish plans. Remember what I'm telling you, people of God, these are powerful things. It must abort selfish plans, selfish schedules. And those are the seeds that touch God. Those are the seeds that brings God into great satisfaction. Those are the seeds that make God say, I'm going to do partnership with me and you. And I'm going to keep on increasing you more and more. Psalm 115 verse 14. That's what I say. The Lord will increase you more and more. Every sower must grab that and recognize that the Lord has a mentality to keep on taking you into abundance. And then when you reach that glory of abundance, there's another glory of abundance. Psalm 126 verse 5 says that those that sow in tears will reap in joy. Psalm 126 verse 5, those that sow in tears will reap in joy. So there has to be, um, there must be sacrifice in your sowing. Meaning that you sacrifice your own pleasure. You sacrifice your own plans, your own schedule. And when your sowing gets to this uh, 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 place in this standard, you have already established pleasure in your tomorrow. The harvest is God allowing you to taste and see that he's good. The harvest is God taking you into the depths of his luxury. The harvest always comes to celebrate the sower and the seed that they sowed. The harvest is joyous times. The harvest is where you get to become a recipient of someone else being generous to you. 
The harvest is God using people to have the same mindset that you have to sow. When the harvest comes, the father is now exalting you, praising you, even worshiping you. Yes. Remember, worship is a word means to celebrate someone as if they're God. Psalm 82, it says that ye are gods. God made you to be gods. The harvest is God worshiping you. Because God is treating you like you treated him. You sold and invested sacrificially into him. Now God sows and invests and it's not even a sacrifice for him. It's his joy. Matthew 7, 11 said, if you being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the father give good gifts to those that ask him? The father wants to give you good gifts. He wants to bless you. He wants to bring you into enjoyment. He wants you to have the best. He wants you to laugh. I think that's Job chapter five. That says that, uh, You will laugh at famine and destruction. I think that's Job chapter 5, 22. I may be wrong. You will laugh at famine and destruction. Let's see there. Job, yeah, that's Job 5, 22. It says you will laugh at famine and destruction. See, this is the sower's theme. Laughing at destruction and famine. Remember, the thief come but to steal, kill, and destroy. So if it said that you're going to laugh at destruction, remember what this text is telling you. You're going to laugh at the thief's ministry. Wow. I never saw this. I never saw this. When they say that you're going to laugh at destruction, that means that you're going to be able to laugh at the thief. You're going to be able to look at the thief and laugh. And say, ha, 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 ha. Saints, I never saw this before. This is so mighty. Look at what the Holy Ghost is showing us here. If we look at this realm of destruction and famine, it said that you're going to laugh. And laughing is a gesture in this text of mocking. So saints, seed blocking demons come to mock your destiny, mock your harvest. But because you are sower, you're going to be able to mock them. Because you're going to get your harvest and you're going to get the life that God has for you. And you're going to get the uh, response that the father has for the sower. And so you're able to laugh at the devices of Satan to have you destroy, which is the thief's ministry. Have you in famine, which is the thief's ministry. Because when you steal from somebody, you leave them in a famine. Whoa. 